Yes, it's another case for that most famous of all manhunters. The detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Presented by the three great Linex home brighteners. Linex clear gloss varnish, Linex cream polish, and Linex self-polishing wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of fine Acme quality paints. Today's curious adventure... Poison with a past. Or Nick Carter, and the mystery of the Vedanta killing. In just a moment, we'll hear how Nick Carter was able to solve the mystery of the Vedanta killings and prevent the strange poison from claiming any more victims. But first, here's a good tip. Millions of American families are happier these days because women who run their homes wisely have learned about Chemtone, the miracle wall finish which makes every home more bright and inviting. Now those same wise homemakers are learning the modern way to new beauty for woodwork, furniture, and floors. The three great Linux home brightness. Linex Clear Gloss to give lustrous, longer-lasting protection to every wood and linoleum surface. Linex Cream Polish to renew the sleek, gleaming beauty of fine furniture. And Linex Self-Polishing Wax to lend rich, satiny loveliness to any floor, wood, linoleum, or tile. Take the modern shortcut to new home beauty with the three great Linex Home Brighteners. You'll find them all at your hardware, paint, or department store. Your headquarters also for Chemtone, the miracle wall finish. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. As we join Nick and Patsy in Nick Carter's office, we find Nick talking to Riley on the phone. But look here, Riley. I can't drop everything I'm doing and help the police department out every time somebody gets killed. Well, I'm not asking you to, Nick. But, but this is something special. I think you'll enjoy working on it. Yes, you always say that, Riley. Every time you get stuck, you tell me it's an unusually interesting case. But this time... Nick, honest it is. All right, give me one reason why it's not just a routine murder case. Well, because the guy was killed while a lot of other people was around, yeah. and nobody knows what's happened. The medical examiner is here, and he swears it's a poison case, but he's stuck completely. It's some queer stuff he never ran into before. Now, now you're an expert on poisons, Nick. You ought to look into this. An unknown poison, huh? Was it given him externally or internally? Oh, we don't know. There, there's not a trace of evidence to show how it was done at all. And you know old Doc Buck is no slouch when it comes to poisons. No, Doc Buck knows his stuff, all right. And he can't figure it out? He's tried every trick he knows, Nick, and yeah, nothing seems to work. Look, will you take a run over here and see what you can make of it? Okay, Riley, what's the address? The Hamilton Apartments on Riverside Drive, uh, apartment G4. I'll be right here waiting for you. We're there in 20 minutes, but it better be good. Oh, it is, Nick. You won't be sorry. So long. So long. So he managed to rope you, did he? I don't know whether he's roped me or not, as you so elegantly put it. Uh He's got me interested enough, so I'm going over and have a look at it. Want to come? Do I want to come? You don't think I want to sit around here when there's a murder case to be solved, do you? I suppose not. Okay, get your hat and let's be on our way. And you too, Patsy. Sure, and it's nice of you to invite us. Oh, all right, all right. Let's dispense with the preliminaries, Riley. Get down to business right away. Who's dead and where's the body? Oh, it's rare and to go you are now, eh? Okay. The corpse is Frederick Shelby, the explorer. Shelby? Well, that fellow's got more lives than a cat. Well, he must have used up all nine of them if he's dead now. The body's right in here, Nick. In the library. Mm. If you look at all the books, most of them pretty old, too. French, German, Russian... What are these, Nick? That one's Sanskrit, Patsy. Oh. Those there are Hindu. Uh-huh. Who lives here, Riley? Is this Shelby's apartment? No, Nick. It belongs to Professor Alexander Travers. Travers, Travers. Oh, yes. Yeah, specialist on Hindu literature and philosophy. Oh, yeah, that's right. Him and some of his friends were talking about that Hindu stuff when Shelby was killed. Well, here's the body here. Ah, yes. Hmm. Been dead long? Oh, not over an hour, the doc says. And that checks with what the others tell us. We're holding them here for now. Look at the expression on his face. He must have died in terrible agony. No doubt of that. And there's no doubt of its being poison either. Not with that look on his face. Doc Buck said the same thing. But not one of his tests showed him what kind of poison was used. He said it could be most anything. Well, Patsy, shift that lead over here a little closer, will you? I want to see something. Sure, Nick. Here. Hmm, yes. Look at the car of his skin. 
practically blue white. He looks almost like a marble statue. Yeah. All right, Riley, where are the rest of the party? Say you're holding them here? Yeah, they're in the next room. Uh, there's Professor Travers. This is his apartment, like I said. A good-looking dame by the name of Mary Devine and Dr. Paul Starr. He's a college teacher. Now, they didn't know what happened when this Shelby passed out, so they phoned for an ambulance. And the intern took one look at him and called us. Anything else before I talk to them? Uh, yeah, they told the doc that none of them had e eaten or drunk anything before or after they came here. So the doc figured maybe Shelby was poisoned by the cigarettes he smoked. So we sent all the butts and ashes down to the lab for analysis. They sent down the pack of cigarettes, too. Only one pack? Yep, they was all smoking out of the same pack. And a report yet? No, no, I, I told them to call me here as soon as they finished. All right, let's have a look at your witnesses. Okay, Nick, right in here. Why they keep us uh, this here is Nick Carter, folks. Nick, this is Mary Devine here. Devine? Over here is Professor Travers. Uh, and that's Dr. Starr. Glad to know you, Mr. Carter. First, let's get straightened out who you all are. Professor Travers, what do you do? I teach Oriental literature at the university, Mr. Carter, but I don't see what you that has to... You will. Dr. Starr, what do you do? I'm a botanist, Mr. Carter. I'm connected with the university, too, indirectly. I see. You, Miss Devine? I'm just a student at the university. But a very fine student, Mr. Carter. Miss Devine won a fellowship in Oriental Literature. She's done some excellent work. Any of you know any possible motive for Shelby's death? I know. We've been talking about it, and we're as much in the dark as you are. What do you know about Shelby? Not very much. We have only one common interest, the Vedanta. As a matter of fact, we first met him at a meeting of the Vedanta Society. Shall be feeling all right this afternoon? As far as we know, he said nothing about feeling ill. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me what happened here this afternoon, as near as you can recall. You say you were all sitting around talking? That's right. We were discussing the Vedanta. What is this Vedanta, Nick? Professor Travers can probably explain that better than I, Patsy. It's a philosophy of life. It was first put forward 1,500 years ago by Hindu scholars. It has to do with controlling the bodily expression so as to heighten the powers of the mind. Why don't you come to a meeting of the Vedanta Society with us someday? That would explain it better than I could, perhaps. Thanks, maybe I will someday. But now, what happened here? Why, we were all seated around, smoking and chatting, when suddenly Shelby started to get faint. In a few minutes, he passed out, that's all. You were all smoking? Oh, yes. Why? I understand you were all smoking the same brand of cigarette. Who's were they? Oh, they were mine, Mr. Carter. Shelby forgot to bring his pipe, and Star was out of the private brand he smokes. I had a full pack, so I used mine. Even Star smoked one. <laughs> he usually wouldn't look at any cigarette that wasn't his own private mixture. Anything else you can think of? No, I think not. Well, that's all I know. Nothing happened that was really unusual, except that Mr. Shelby died. All right. Give your names and addresses to Lieutenant Riley. And don't leave town until we tell you you can. That's all. Good. All, all right. right. Well, Nick, what do you make of it? I don't know. No apparent motive, no suspects, unknown poison. Of course, it's too early to know definitely. It couldn't be suicide, could it? No, I don't think so, Patsy. I'm pretty sure it's murder. But I'm also sure the murderer covered his tracks very thoroughly. Yes, Lieutenant. Yes, I got it. Of course, I'll tell him. Well, what did you expect? Oh, you. Goodbye. I gather that was Riley you were talking to? Mm, you gather, right. He said to be sure and tell you that the laboratory reports absolutely nothing wrong with the cigarettes or the butts or the ashes. All normal and natural. Hmm, too bad. Sort of hoping that... Well, never mind. There's an answer somewhere, and I'll find it yet. He also said to tell you that Mary Devine was coming in to see you very shortly now. Did he say what for? No, just said she was coming. Maybe she's remembered something. That... Oh, I'll get it, Nick. That may be Miss Devine now. Or a bill collector. Oh, come in, Miss Devine. Mr. Carter, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Miss Devine. Good morning, Mr. Carter. Uh, I don't know that what I have to tell you is of any value, but I'll let you decide that. Fair enough. What is it? Do you know what this is? Oh, what a beautiful flower. What is it? In India, they call it Datura. It has other names, too. Natura? Well, that's a poison. Yes. Patsy, put my notes on poison. Oh, they're right here, Nick. Here you are. Thanks. Natura. Natura. 
And, uh, yes, here we are. Hmm. Taste is pleasant, given in small doses. It intoxicates strongly. Two drams will prove fatal at once. It can be mixed with food or drink and will kill without leaving a trace. It cannot be isolated unless the chemist knows what he's looking for. Gosh, that's a nasty poison, isn't it? Yes. In India, mothers feed it to unwanted girl babies. Mr. Devine, where did you get this flower? Well, I... I got it special delivery this morning. Dr. Starr got one, and Professor Travis got one, too, the same way. I see. In other words, the murderer warns you that he's going to kill all three of you. Same way he murdered Shelby. It looks that way. Why would he want to kill all of them, Nick? Probably because he's afraid that they noticed something when Shelby was killed yesterday that would give him away if they told anyone about it. But I, I don't know anything, Mr. Carter. Neither do the others. Perhaps you do, Mr. Vines. Don't realize it. It often happens. At any rate, the killer's taking no chances. Patsy, call Riley. Have him tell the lab what to look for. Maybe they can find some traces of it that way. Of course, Nick. What do you think I'd better do, Mr. Carter? Have to be very careful of what you eat or drink and with whom you associate for a few days. In the meantime, I'll be busy finding out what I can. You have any plans for the immediate future? No, not especially. And you're sure nothing happened at Professor Travers' apartment yesterday that would help us? No, Mr. Carter. Not a thing. Hmm. i better see Star and Travers. Maybe they can tell me something they overlooked before. Well, Mr. Carter, they'll both be at the Vedanta Society meeting this morning at 11. Swami Atulanada is speaking, and he's the favorite lecturer. Why don't we go to the meeting, too? You can talk to them there. Excellent idea, Mr. Devine. Riley says he'll take care of notifying the lab. Thanks, Bessie. Mr. Devine and I are going to a meeting of the Vedanta Society. You better stay here in case Riley does learn anything. I'll call you later. You ready, Mr. Devine? Yes. All right, let's go. I really don't know much about them, Mr. Carter. I see, but perhaps you could tell me this. How close to Shelby were Travers and Starr? Well, Paul Starr barely knew him. As a matter of fact, he met Shelby for the first time yesterday. And Professor Travers? Oh, he and Shelby were pretty chummy. They had a common interest in the Vedanta, and they each have a collection of rare Sanskrit manuscripts, which they will to each other when they die. You mean whoever dies first bequeaths his manuscripts to the others? Yes, that's it. How valuable are these manuscripts? Oh, they're priceless, I understand. Hmm. And what about you? Where do you fit into this picture? Well, I... I met them because of my interest in oriental languages and literature. I, I feel that after the war, with the world made so much smaller by the use of airlines all over the globe, I, I may be glad to know all I can about the Orient. Oh, yes, of course. How much further is this place where the meeting's being held? Oh, just across the next avenue, in that old brownstone house. I'm sure you'll enjoy the meeting with Swami Atulanada being the lecturer. He, he's wonderful. Perhaps so. But I think I'm going to enjoy talking to Star and Travers even more. Well, Mr. Carter, wasn't he wonderful? Yes, just very interesting. Much more intellectual than I expected. Oh. Well, Mary, I see you've managed to convert Mr. Carter. That's fast work. Well, I wouldn't call it conversion, Dr. Star. My main reason for coming here was to talk to you and Professor Travers. Yes, you, uh, you want to talk to me, Carter? I do, just for a few minutes. Well, suppose we have lunch first and then talk later. Oh, good idea. Where shall we go? Let's go to the Bombay Curry Shop, the best place of its kind in town. Oh, Excellent. I'm starved. How about you, Miss Carter? Well, I could certainly eat something. Well, come on, then. The Curry Shop it is. with curried rice and vegetables. And then over there in the center of the restaurant, on that long table there, those are the special seasonings, like hors d'oeuvres. So you help yourself to those, whatever you want, to go with this main dish. Such as what? Oh, Bombay duck, dried saltfish, tamarind, and other spicy things. See, Dr. Starr is getting his now. Shall we try some? Oh, by all means. Yeah, come on. Some of these things are really delicious. Here, Professor, how about some of this tamarind? Have you learned to like it yet? <laughs> I ate tamarind before you were born. Give me a good helping of it, will you, Star? Yeah, you are. Oh, certainly. It's delicious. Take anything you like, Mr. Carter. You never know what's good until you try it, you know. It certainly looks appetizing. Now, let's try a little of everything. Well, that certainly was good. I enjoyed that meal. Yeah, I thought you would. 
Uh, cigarette, Carter? Oh, no, thanks. I don't smoke. How about you, Star? Care for one? Oh, no, thanks. I prefer my own special mixture. Oh, Dr. Star is a cigarette fiend, Mr. Carter, but he won't smoke anything but his own brand. Says any other kind makes him sick. Well, gentlemen, now that we've taken care of the inner man, I'd like to ask you a few questions about Shelby. Uh, sure. Sure, ask away. Well, we don't know, we won't tell you. Why, Professor, I believe you're drunk. Drunk? No, sir. I never touch a drop of liquor. It's too intox... Intox... It, it's not good for you. Well, you are drunk, Professor. Don't try to kid us. I'm not. I know what's eating you. You're jealous. I'm... I'm a better man than you, and I proved it, didn't I? I... I don't know what you're talking about. No? You're a liar, Star. You know all right, all right. But she... She... Would... Professor Travers. Travers. Why, he's dead. Mr. Carter, that's just the way Shelby died. Well, here's another clue for Nick in his effort to find out who killed Shelby and how. Will he be able to track down the murderer before any more killings can take place? We'll see in just a moment. Do you youngsters track in slush? Do those umbrellas drip puddles in the hall? Does the dog leave muddy paw marks on all your shining floors? Never mind. When you keep your floors protected with beautiful Linux clear gloss varnish, you'll find that it keeps both dirt and water right on the surface, where they're easy to clean away. And that same sturdy protective finish gives sparkling beauty as well to linoleum, floors, and woodware. For Linux Clear Gloss has a gleaming, transparent luster that gives all your household things renewed attractiveness. And how well Linux Clear Gloss wears, resisting damage by hot grease, boiling water, fruit acid, perfume, even alcohol. Use it on tabletops, on bathroom tile, on linoleum throughout your home. You'll find it the most satisfactory household finish you've tried, as thousands of other successful American homemakers have. What's more, Linex Clear Gloss Varnish is easy to brush on. So ask your dealer for Linex, L-I-N-X, Linex Clear Gloss Varnish. You'll find all three great Linex home brighteners and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, at hardware, paint, and department stores everywhere. And now back to our story. We left Nick Carter in the Bombay curry shop where he has been lunching. Suddenly, Professor Travers uttered a few strange remarks and fell over dead. Later that same afternoon, Nick is talking to Lieutenant Riley in the latter's office. You say, Nick, that this, this that tour, whatever it is, killed him, huh? Well, obviously, Riley. All the symptoms were present, although I didn't realize it until after it was all over. No, but, Nick, Lieutenant Riley's chemist has analyzed all the food in the restaurant and nothing out of the way was found. You all ate the same food, didn't you? Yes, Patsy, we did. Then how is it that Professor Travis died and none of the rest of you were even sick? I don't know yet. Well, I think you're nuts, Nick. Now, look, you said Travis and Shelby was got to leave each other their collections of manuscripts now, didn't you? That's what Mary said. Well, then, Travis invited Shelby to his apartment and killed him so as to get Shelby's collection. Then when you started questioning him today, he got scared and committed suicide. It's as plain as any... No, 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 Riley. That's impossible. A man of Travis' type wouldn't kill himself to escape arrest. He tried to kill me instead. He was an egotist, as his conversation proved. Egotists consider suicide a sign of weakness. But if it was murder, how was it done, Nick? Answer me that. I'm not ready to answer that yet. Well, have you got even one little clue that says it's murder? Just one. Yes, Riley, I have. You have? What is it? Why did Dr. Starr smoke one of Professor Travers' cigarettes when they were at Travers' apartment? When Mary tells me he'd rather go without smoking than to smoke anything but his own particular mixture. Ah, but they all smoked the same cigarettes that day. Nick, only Shelby was killed. Where'd the star come in? And today, Nick, you said the star did smoke his own mixture. Yes, but facts are facts, Patsy. You can't get away from that. If Dr. Starr did something unusual, it probably was done for a reason. The fact that I don't yet understand the reason doesn't make it any less important. Nicholas Carter's office. Is Mr. Carter there, please? This is Mary Devine's mother calling. Oh, Shirley, just a moment. For you, Nick, Mary's mother. Oh, thank you. Hello, Mrs. Devine. What can I do for you? Well, I just want you to know that Mary will be a little late in meeting you. Meeting me? Yes, she expected to be there by 8 o'clock, but she'll be delayed 15 or 20 minutes. Just a minute, Mrs. Devine. She expected to be where? What? 
At Dr. Starr's apartment, as you asked her to. When did I ask her to meet me at Dr. Starr's apartment? Why, why you phoned an hour ago. I did Didn't not. Didn't you? I did not. Well, well, whoever phoned said he was you, and said you or he had something important to tell her, and asked her to be at Dr. Starr's apartment by 8 o'clock. I'm glad you called, Mrs. Devine. I'll take care of it right away. Oh, what's wrong, Mr. Carter? Mary isn't in any danger, is she? Not yet, but she might have been if you hadn't called. Oh, Mr. Carter, well, please don't let anything happen now, to me. don't Mary. worry, Mrs. Devine. I'll take care of her. And I'll take care of him, too. Yes, Dr. Starr. Carter. You expected me? I know. I, I thought... You thought I was Mary Devine, didn't you? Why, I... Why do you say that? Mary's mother told me. You were the one who phoned her, weren't you? Clever, aren't you? Yes, I phoned her. I I had something I wanted to show her. Well, suppose you show it to me instead. I don't think you'd be interested. So why you're wrong. I'd be interested in anything about you. For example, why you smoked one of Professor Travers' cigarettes yesterday at his apartment. When you'd usually prefer to go without rather than smoke anything but your own particular mixture. Why, I... I, just I answer did... my question for you? You wanted to kill Travers. It was Vlad Bud between you. Probably over that woman Travers mentioned in the curry shop this afternoon. So you prepared a cigarette full of the Torah, dry, ground fine. And when you took one of the cigarettes from the pack Travers had, you substituted the one you'd prepared. You knew Mary was safe because she didn't smoke. But you made a mistake in your calculation somewhere, and Shelby got the poison cigarette instead of Travers, isn't that it? You're very clever, aren't you, Mr. Carter? I've changed my mind. I do have something here I want to show you. This. Hmm. A gun. Was that what you were going to show Mary when she got here? No, but I can't take any chance on you. No, just here you are. How do you know it was Dartura killed Shelby? I recognized the symptoms as soon as Mary told me what they were. And they were the same symptoms as Travers showed when he died this afternoon. Died from eating tamarind sprinkled with a Tura powder, right? You seem to be always right, Mr. Carter. Yes, I got to the condiment table first, sprinkled the poison on some of the tamarind. Then I made sure Travers got it. Yeah. Star, why did you hate him so? Because he took my girl away from me. Took her away from me just because he wanted to prove he could do it. He didn't want her. In fact, after he got her, he refused to marry her. It broke her heart. And she killed us. He's an egotistical beast. And having got rid of Travers, you felt you had to get rid of Mary, too, because she might unconsciously betray you some way, right? Quite right, my omniscient detective. Now that you've cleared up all the mystery, I'm afraid I shall have to get rid of you, too. Because I can't have you going around. Mary. Come in. No one gets in here until after I've taken care of you. Well, you're wrong, Star. I left the outside latch off when I came in earlier. I left the latch off? Come on in, Mary. Why, you... Don't take it. Don't take it. I don't like having anyone try to finish me off, Star. I prefer to do the finishing off myself. Just a minute. Come in, Mary. Are you all right, Ned? What happened? Did you get him? What happened, Mr. Carter? Patsy wouldn't tell me. Uh, Dr. Starr's in no condition to ask you in, so I will. Come on in, all of you. What's the matter with Doc? <gasps> Did you have to kill him, Nick? Oh, Riley, you know me better than that. No, he's just uh, temporarily out. Oh, well, let me get the cuffs on him before he comes to. Yeah. Yeah, that'll hold him. So you were right, Nick. It was Dr. Starr. Yes, Patsy, it was. I felt pretty sure of it from the first. Because being a botanist and a specialist in oriental plant life, he'd know all about the Datura plant. But I couldn't figure out any motive for him to want to kill Shelby. And that stopped me. Until Travers was killed. Then I realized that maybe Starr didn't intend to kill Shelby at all. This turned out to be the case. But, Mr. Carter, how did you know that it was Dr. Starr even when Professor Travers was killed? It was Travers himself who gave me the clue I needed. You remember what he said in the curry shop about having proved himself a better man than Starr? Yes, but... I thought he was just raving. Oh, no, Mary. He was doing that deliberately. The Vedanta philosophy teaches control of the body to sharpen the mind, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But... I feel sure that when Travers knew he was dying, that's just what he did. An extraordinary effort. 
He kept his mind clear enough to accuse Starr by giving me Starr's motive for killing him. But he did it by insinuation, so as not to warn Starr what he was doing. That's sure a new one on me, using a Hindu philosophy to accuse your murderer. Yes, Riley, that is a new one. Just shows you how you can get something valuable out of anything you study. Every religion, every system of thought, every philosophy has something worthwhile in it, no matter how peculiar it may seem to us at first. In just a moment, Nick and Patsy will give you a preview of next week's exciting case. Thousands upon thousands of American men are fighting overseas, fighting for home as they remember it. One of the most important things we can do is to keep home as they remember it. And the most satisfactory way to care for your home is with those three modern shortcuts to household loveliness. The three great Linux home brighteners. Linux cream polish, for instance, renews the original gleaming beauty of your fine furniture, reveals the handsome grain of the wood, frees it from the unsightly cloudiness of fingerprints, dust, and old polish. And it accomplishes this result in one quick, easy application. For Linex cream polish actually cleans as it polishes. It cuts your job in half, saves you one whole step in your cleaning day routine. And when you finish, you'll see that Linex cream polish has left no oily film on the surface of your furniture, for it dries hard so that no dust clings to it. Linex cream polish is truly the ideal method of caring for fine furniture, so use it regularly. Ask your dealer for it by name, Linex Cream Polish for Fine Furniture. You'll find all three great Linex Home Brighteners, Linex Self-Polishing Wax, Linex Clear Gloss Varnish, and Linex Cream Polish at your nearest hardware, paint, or department store. And now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. Well, Nick, what's your story about this next time? Black widows, Ken. Uh, what kind of widows are black widows? The spiders, Ken. Poisonous spiders. But they spin very lovely webs that are used by the Army and Navy for making precision instruments. See, the web of black widow spiders is unexcelled for making hairs and sighting devices used by our armed forces. Well, who got into trouble, the black widows or the armed forces? Neither, Ken. It was the killer who wanted to steal a large shipment of spider web, and to do so was forced to kill two people. But a black widow stopped him. With Nick's help. Well, what do you call this cheerful little tale? Webs of murder. Oh, the mystery of the black widow spider. Complete details next week. So long. So long, everybody. And so long to both of you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be waiting for your story next week as usual. <laughs> Next week at this same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Carter, Master Detective, entitled Webs of Murder. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Black Widow Spiders. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is featured in Street and Smith magazines. Lauren Clark is starred as Nick with Helen Choate as Patsy. Original music is played by Lou White, and the programs are written and directed by Jock McGregor. Nick Carter, Master Detective, is presented at this time and over these same stations each week by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux Clear Gloss Varnish, Linux Cream Polish, and Linux Self-Polishing Wax. Created by Acme, America's great producer of Acme fine quality paints. This is Ken Powell speaking for the thousands of Linux dealers all over America and saying so long until next week. This is Mutual. <laughs>